You fail only if you stop writing. Ray Bradbury. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee S's. Happy NaNoWriMo. If you're listening to this on the day that this episode comes out, today is your third day in 2022's NaNoWriMo campaign. I hope things have gone to a great start so far. And we hope to encourage you throughout the rest of the month and the rest of your life with great writing advice. And in this month in particular, bad writing advice. Yes. For those of you either new to the writing world or new to the podcast, NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month. So the goal is to write and finish a novel or get as close to finishing a novel as you can in the 30 days of November. I believe only 17% of people who declare a project hit the 50,000 words. It is not an easy task. Because this month is such a big deal for writers, we want to tackle the bad advice that we always get. The first topic we're going to address is that you should only write if you're inspired. I used to be a writer who, if I was inspired, if I had that spark of idea, I would sit down, I'd write 3,000 words, and then I would lose inspiration, and I wouldn't write anything for years until I finally got inspired again to write. That is the time of my life where I was not even a hobbyist writer. I was just a person who occasionally wrote down a story idea. Now, there is a logic to the advice that you'll hear when they say only write when you're inspired. The reason people say this is because inspiration is a great fuel for any art, including writing. It is important to have inspiration be part of your process. If you don't feel inspired by a story idea, then why are you writing it? I get that aspect of it, but it's a dangerous thing to rely on the entire time. You see a lot of people say about the greatest works of art of how inspired they were. So it's very easy to fall into that mentality of inspiration is absolutely necessary to create any kind of art when that's simply not the case. I would say that it is important, it is necessary to get started. You have to have a story idea in the first place in order to get started, but it's not how you finish a project. Inspiration is also really great for plowing through that word count, especially in NaNoWriMo when we are paying a lot closer attention to that word count. To get 3,000 words out in a day when you're inspired is super easy. But that's, again, very difficult to maintain. If you are only writing that when you are inspired, you're going to get 3,000 words in a day and nothing for five days, and then 5,000 words, and then nothing for 10 days. And your average isn't going to be enough to reach that 50,000 by the end of the month. So there are a lot of reasons why we say, do not lean on this advice. This is not good advice for a healthy writing habit. When you were an inspiration-based writer, how many books did you finish writing? Zero. It wasn't until I decided that I needed to finish a book and stop relying solely on inspiration that I actually got a book written. And in my world, I found that it's very difficult to improve your writing if you are solely an inspiration-based author, because the quality of your writing is based entirely on those moments of inspiration. So you can't raise the floor. You can just hope to reach the ceiling for your writing. You can be very inconsistent, and it's very difficult to improve. And in that same sense, it's difficult to judge what's the good writing and what's the bad writing, because anything you write based solely on inspiration, you will look at and see and remember what inspired you in those moments. And you'll see this beautiful grand picture where to some other people, it doesn't look the same. It doesn't feel the same because all you've done is write on inspiration. I'm speaking from personal experience here. It's also very easy if you approach writing with the mentality of only writing when inspired, to stop being a writer. A writer, by definition, is someone who writes. If you only write when inspired, 
then you'll write two days out of a year. Maybe if you're incredibly fortunate, 12 days out of a year. I eat pizza more frequently than that. <laughs> if I were to live by this advice, I would be more aptly called a pizza eater than I would be called a writer. And I struggle with this one a lot. If you really want to write, it needs to become a habit. It needs to be written into your schedule. And it doesn't have to be every day, but it should be consistent. Whether that's you take a chunk of time on your weekend every weekend in order to write. But that's how you really keep that inspiration and that creativity going. We've used the analogy before that it's like a water tap. You actually have to turn on the faucet to get creativity and get inspiration. And it's a lot easier if that just keeps flowing than if you were trying to constantly turn it on and off and on and off and on and off. So instead of arguing 100% against this advice, there are elements of it you can take away. We do not by any means want to say that inspiration is bad. Inspiration is incredibly helpful. Definitely answer the muse if you can. It's a matter of finding the balance. If you are inspired to work on a story idea and you feel and have that muse calling to you, like Lee said, answer it, work on it, and then keep working on it even when that well has, you think, run dry. Because then you will find new sources of inspiration as you make it a habit to continue working even when you aren't inspired. Also, recognize what gives you inspiration. For me, I have more or less accidentally trained myself to enjoy a particular tea during NaNoWriMo month. I have it off and on throughout the rest of the year, but when I drink it and I'm writing at the same time, then when I drink it, I start to want to write. I have Pavlovically conditioned myself into thinking that rooibos equals inspiration. And it's so easy to Pavlov yourself here and condition yourself to write under certain circumstances. You just have to be consistent. Make it a habit like anything else you want to make a habit in your life. And then the last thing that you should work with with inspiration is that if you look back on your other pieces of work, those things that you have written, identify your favorite scenes and just think, did you feel inspired before you wrote it? A lot of people have this inspiration equals quality mentality that simply isn't the case. If you look back on your own stuff, some of your favorite scenes, you will definitely feel inspired. Some of your favorite scenes, you will have felt very intimidated by the scene. Some of your favorite scenes are just a whim because you needed to get that word count out and the characters spoke to you and magic happened. It's very rare that all of your scenes that you wrote when inspired are the good ones and all of the scenes you wrote when not inspired are all terrible. It's simply not an equivalent. It's not the case. So if someone comes at you and they say you should only write when you're inspired, we have a few ways to manage that. Number one, take out the word only. Write when you're inspired. If you are inspired, absolutely drop everything, go write in that moment. You will create something and hopefully it'll be beautiful. Hopefully it'll be usable. But at least you answered the muse's call. But don't only write when you're inspired. Think of your other tools that help you get that writing done. It's impossible to hit that 50,000 words without discipline. Discipline is a much greater tool and a much more reliable tool than inspiration. But spite is my favorite. Yeah, a lot of my favorite stuff has been written out of spite. <laughs> also, write as often as you can, especially in this month. If you're trying to reach 50,000 words or if you set yourself an alternative goal, you need to write consistently. You can't write a thousand bad scenes in a row. One of those scenes is going to be good. The more you write, the more you have to choose from, the more likely you're going to have something of quality in it. And if someone says to you, write only when inspired, respond with inspiration within art is recognized after the art is created, not before the art is created. So if a certain thing that you're doing, whatever your creativity is, is inspired, you don't know that before it starts. 
I think of a lot of classic books, classic stories, and all the English teachers who were like, oh, this author was so inspired, blah, blah, blah. I mean, were they really, though? He was just writing a story about, like, a fisherman who couldn't give up on a stupid marlin. (laughs) Yeah, sure, there's some, like, grand allegories to be read in this thing. But was Hemingway really inspired as he wrote it? Or did the work then become its own thing afterwards? I say it's the latter. The work became something inspired. I mean, I disagree. I really don't like that story. But Hemingway didn't set out to create this grand allegorical tale. Let's be honest, Hemingway was probably drunk at the time. Exactly. (laughs) Instead of thinking as inspiration as a trigger to write, think of writing in the same way you think about exercising, going to the gym. If I went to the gym 12 times in this last year, I would not really have gotten all I can out of the value of the gym. But if I went to the gym, even when I wasn't feeling like it, then my growth will have been so much more. Yes, take leg days where you focus on writing metaphors or whatever, and take rest days. Those are equally as important in making sure that you can maintain over a long period of time. But your gains will come when you approach it with discipline instead of inspiration. We're not saying that inspiration is bad. Absolutely, inspiration is a good thing to have when you're writing. Relying on the inspiration is what's bad. In order to write, you need to combine everything. Be inspired, be disciplined, and write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 